Tobacco, the indigo. Who do you think going to raise the kids? Who do you think going to clean the house? So stupid Abe had to think about it, and guess what they came up with? They came up with a whole set of laws called the slave codes. And you know what they were? They were a set of laws to reinstitute slavery. Let me tell you what they were. There was the vagrancy law. A vagrant was any person who wasn't fully employed and didn't have a place of residence. You know who that was? The four million slaves who just found that they were free. As soon as they stepped up the plantation, you're breaking the law, they locked you up. And as soon as they started that process, then they created what's called the convict lease program. You know what the convict yes. lease program was? The convict lease program was a program that said once you were arrested and incarcerated, you could be leased back to the plantation. Right. Wow. Sometime before your bed even got cold. Then they said, oh, yeah, you want to vote? Sure, we got the literacy law. You know what that law was? The literacy law said that you could vote, but you had to first read this statement. If you read the statement, you were arrested. Why? Because the only way you could read it, if you know how to read it, was against the law. And so they had the legal system set up and designed to reinstitute to chattel slavery. Now we got to fast forward. But we don't got a lot of time. But what I will tell you, even today, they got this drug-free zone. Let me tell you why the drug-free zone is a joke. Drug-free zone said if you get caught with drugs, either in your possession, sale, or distribution in a drug-free zone, which is 500 feet from a school, that you are required to get the maximum penalty. Well, guess what? Everywhere. Anywhere you go, is a thousand feet. five hundred or thousand feet from a school, which means we automatically gonna get the maximum. That's when they come up with the mandatory minimums. Would we'll say, well, then, if in fact you get arrested with a certain amount of drugs, I gotta give you fifteen to life. You know why? Because the prison industrial complex is a business, and we are a commodity. We were brought here as a commodity, and as soon as they figured out that they could no longer use us in the way they use us, they had to figure out a new way to use us. And when this way runs out, they'll come out with another way to use us. Until we wake up, until we raise our consciousness, until we recognize that I want you to kill each other. I want you to call your sister by the B name. I want you to call each other niggas. I want y'all to rob and steal each other. You know why? Because I make money all the way to the bank. My daughter's destroyed. My uncle is the judge. My nephew is the prosecutor. My cousin is the defense attorney. And my, my brother is the correction officer. My other cousin is the warden. And if you die and kill each other, I make the embalming floor to bury your dead ass. And then on top of that, I build the coffin. So I'm making money across the board. So I don't want you to get conscious. I don't want you to be in a room teaching each other. I don't want you to raise your level of thinking. I want you to go out there and bang each other. I want you to go out there because when you do that, my son, who's not yet born can have an education at Harvard. I can buy that yacht that I always wanted. I can live in a life of luxury and I can continue to capitalize off your stupidity. Mm. That's what the prison industrial. Now I gotta fast forward to one more piece. This is the final piece that I gotta go because we ain't got a lot of time. We heard a lot tonight. We gotta get out on the streets and do some work. Come on down. I tell you, I did a lot of time in prison, so I had a lot of time to think about this. And you know, when I go articulate this stuff in Congress, and you know, you see the guys standing on the end, they get ready to come get me. You know, every time I go and speak at one of those sessions where you gotta be real formal, you know, they don't know, I know how to get formal too, you know. I can take in consideration the mitigating circumstances. I can do that too, right? I learned that too, but I also know how to keep it real. And I'll tell you this, the system right now is looking for a new way because you know the numbers are starting to go down. Yeah. See, we killing each other too fast, mm, right. and so we're not filling the prison cells. See, they need wow. us to slow down the killing a little yeah. bit so we can fill themselves because <laughs> prisons are built upstate. And when they build prisons upstate, that means it creates jobs for upstate economies. Right. See, right. prisons became the new upstate economy. Right. When manufacturers started leaving America because they were trying to escape unionization, they had to come up with a new way to sustain the economy. So they built prisons. Them white folks up there that was kind of talking about we want prison, they was doing that because they meant we want jobs. We need your babies locked up so they can fill themselves right. in order for us to have jobs for now and throughout eternity. And what the reality is, is that if I can't make money on you in the front, I'm going to make money on you in the back. And if I can't make money in the back, I'm going to make money off you in the front. And the only way I can do that is to keep you in a state of darkness. The only way I can do that, I got to keep you asleep. The only way I can do that, I got to keep you focused on killing each other so you don't have time to figure out who the real enemy is. See, I got to keep you in the Willie Lynn syndrome. I got to keep the tall against the short, the light against the dark, the weak against the strong. I got to do that. I got to tell you, oh, this guy ain't real. God told me uh, recently I'm not real because I wear a suit and tie. What kind of foolishness is that? Black people come in all shapes and sizes, you know. Somebody's got to be the intellectual. somebody got to crunch the numbers. I don't necessarily like it, but I got to do it because I got to be able to come out and explain the numbers. So this is how the number game works. Do you know every time we go upstate to prison, it's changing? You know they got this thing called gerrymandering. 
Gerrymandering means when you get locked up, they send you 100 and something miles away, 200, 300 miles away. What that means, all the money that comes from your hood goes upstate. Right. So every time they do the census count, they have to count you in that county as if you're a resident of that county. Right. When they do that, they say we have an exploding population and we need more money to build more hospitals, schools, and roads, which those folks is never going to use. Right. And the fact of the matter is that the person who's going to make it responsible for them to secure that money is going to be the elected official up there who's representing right. the interests of his real constituency but ain't you. Why? Because you locked up and you can't vote. But we don't recognize that. So we continue to feed into our own self-destruction. We continue to feed into our own demise. And we think we're doing something. But the only thing we're doing is we dancing to the tune. And so there's some white folks sitting back in a place that they call Silicon Valley. And they right there computerizing. And they figuring out the next way that they can use us as consumers. I tell you, y'all killing each other a little bit too fast and themselves is, is, is starting to be empty. And they don't like an empty cell. So they figure out new ways. For those guys who stand on the corner slinging drugs to my somebody told them to drop the dime on you. You to drop a dime on you? They got a whole thing right. They don't even use infrared anymore. They got a whole new kind of science now where they can take a millimeter of light amplified a million times. They can see you from 20 blocks away through cinder block walls. They got satellite right now. Any one of y'all can go home on your computer, put on Google Earth, put your address in, and it'll come right down on your front door. Right now, you can do it tonight. They got technology now with DNA deoxyribonucleic acid, but we just call it DNA for short. Fact of the matter is, is that when folks is doing a crime, they ain't thinking struck. So they're going to touch something, they're going to sweat, they're going to spit, they're going to urinate, and you're going to leave some evidence. Do you know DNA is 99.9% .9 accurate? That's right. Do you know all they need is a little piece of hair? Anything off you and they can bring it right to you. That's the reason why they want all our kids fingerprinted. Because once I get you in the database, I got you. You see, and since we all look alike anyway, it don't make a difference which one of us they snatch up. As long as I get one of y'all. Let me close by saying this. Because we can go on and on. We can go on and on. What we did, what we're doing in the city, I created a, an institution, and I'm looking for folks as soon as they come out of prison. You know why? Because I got a lot of stuff in my head I got to get out. Yes, sir. Everybody on my staff was, was, was former blood, former crip, did time in prison with a stick-up kid. You don't know nobody that loved more money than me. I love money, drugs, clothes, jewelry. Used to, don't love it no more. I love the good life, but I find a different way to do it now. I can sell books now. People pay me to run my mouth, and I like to do that. So I found a way to take my skills and legitimize it. Just like they trying to find a way to legitimize slavery, we got to do the same thing. Them same skills you use on the street, banging and doing what you're doing, those are transferable skills. You know more than any corporate CEO. We know all about accounting and marketing and distribution and packaging. Don't nobody know it better than us. We create all the fashion. We trailblazers. We ain't got to be following nobody. But we first got to wake up because we still sleep. I'll tell you that the fact that we're still here now is a testimony to our greatness. We done came through every ism you can think of. Every form of racism, every form of sexism, every discrimination, every annihilation, every form of genocide. We have pushed out, locked out, shut up. They did everything they could do and we're still here. That should tell you something. So I'll end in the words of Brother El Haj Malik, otherwise known as Malcolm X, who said that we as a people have done so much for so long with so little that we're now qualified to do anything with nothing. So always shoot for the moon, because even if you miss, you'll still be amongst the stars. Thank you.